Oh, the Gossip Week. It's qualifying day here in Valkenswaard. The MX2 riders are preparing for their first sand track of the year. We're going to have a word with one of the new riders to the World Championship this season. Luke Stike, if we can have a word with you, Luke. Luke, I know you guys have got um, sand tracks back home in Australia, but are they much different over here in Europe? It, uh, it's a lot different, actually. It's uh, Obviously, the weather back home is a lot hotter and stuff, and uh, in Europe, it's a lot colder. So it's, uh, tracks are a lot more wet, but uh, it's going to be good. And how are you settling in over here? Oh, not, a, not as easy as I thought it was going to be, but you know, obviously they, they don't call it the World Championship for nothing. But um, I'm trying my hardest and uh, it's getting better by little, but taking time. How will you be happy finishing the end of this season? Um, you know, I just really want to be, just might have little goals and uh, obviously I'll set a top 10 goal in a, in a round and uh, just top eight and just have slowly goals from there. But um, just one step at a time will be good. Best of luck this weekend. Thank you. In time training in MX2, Jeffrey Hurlings on the Rebel KTM factory machine was fastest 1.2 seconds quicker than Dylan Ferrandis on the CLS Kawasaki Monster Running Machine. His teammate, Arnold Tonus, with Jordi Tixier, Valentin Guio, and Brian Bogers rounding out the top six. Packed house here at Valkenswaard on Saturday for MX2 qualifying. When the gate dropped, it was a drag race into turn one. Boutron thought he got the whole shot, but he was just pit by Arnold Tonus and Valentin Guio. As we head down the straight on board with Boutron, just see how he got pipped there. A push back into third, and it was a very close call as well as Valentin Guio and Arnold Tonus duked it out. The two Swiss riders not giving an inch on that opening start through the first few turns. You can see how frantic it is as well from the GoPro from Jose Boutron. But end of the first lap, it was Arnold Tonus who led the rest of the field. Guio, Boutron and Hurlings with his teammate Tixie 8 just behind, then Dylan Ferrandis. On board with Tonus as he sweeps through whilst leading the early stage of the race. Over the Ippon step down, Guio still behind him. Jeffrey Hurlings by this stage have moved up into third, pushing Boutron back into fourth position. See the rest of the guys going through, Tixier, Fevre, Petrov got a good start, but then he made a mistake later on in the race. So too did Mel Pocock, but it wasn't long before Jeffrey Hurlings found himself onto the rear wheel of the Kawasaki 200, the championship leader, Arnold Tonus. Back on board with Tonus. Jeffrey Hurlings, though, on lap two, found his way down the inside just before the riders headed down the back straight. Cheeky little look back there as well from Jeffrey Hurlings. And from there, he was never really pressurized. Arnold Tonus and Valentin Guio gave chase for maybe two or three laps afterwards. And pretty impressive ride from Valentin Guio on the standing construct KTM. Just behind them, Tim Geiser on the Garibaldi Honda was in fourth. Boutron was fifth. Ferrandis and Tixie eight with Fevre down in eight. Petrov was in ninth at that stage. Around right about lap three, lap four. But the track starting to rough up in the MX2 qualifying race. And a lot of action out on track with the Honda 150s and the 125 European and the Women's Championship here as well this weekend. Monticelli was having a good ride. You just saw a glimpse of him there, the 128. Who we're following now. Boutron just getting past there. Monticelli was running quite well, actually, in eighth position until the final lap when he made a mistake and dropped three positions when he fell round turns three and four over the first camelback. But Jeffrey Hurlings though, once he found his groove and was on form here, he really did get his head down. And in the 25 minute qualifying race, started to eke out more than 20 seconds over his rivals. So it doesn't bode well for them as they head for the races tomorrow. But Valentin Guio already said it once a moment ago, 92, standing construct KTM, really did start to pressurize Arnold Tonus in the closing stages of the race. Never really got close enough to really do any damage. But in the end, though, Jeffrey Hurlings, he came over the line after 12 laps, well clear of the rest of the field. Tonus was second, Guio third, guys at fourth, Tixie eight was fifth.